apprenticeship program which we call in um, in the legal profession we call it pupillage where you serve, you prepare to be admitted to the bar. So I walked to this gentleman and I told him, I want my own practice but I don't have the I don't have the master. So I want to work for me while also working for you. So in this establishment of viewers, just give me one little tiny room in my establishment. I work for you and I work for you for free. I don't want you to pay me. But I want you to allow me to work under the, my own name. So I'll come here with something called a Pabuna Mama Attorneys at Law. And you'll allow me to even put a little click with that, just a small one, not intrusive, a little click with that name on my door if you allow me to occupy. I don't keep it here to the room that serves as your little kitchenette today. I'll be okay, just give me a small place. I just need a place where I can put a desk and a desk and a desktop. A desk and a desktop. So he accepted. And that was the beginning of my story. So I opened it in that little room. I had my own little name. 70% of the time, I actually did his work. I toiled and moiled for him. And I did all the, all the drafting of pleadings. Lawyers will know that the most important stage in a case is not standing to like a case in court is actually putting together a case in what we call pleadings. So I would do all the pleadings. I would do all the appearances in court. I would go to meeting it. I would do 70% of his work and 30% of my, of my own work. And by and by, I grew a little bit of Zigwebe on my own, okay? And I was able to transition to my own space and go my own law firm. As I did that, I also ran um, a public interest initiative called the Chambers of Justice, which was an initiative to offer free legal services to those who are not able to do it. We were doing cases on FGM in Kajiado, we were doing cases on uh, um, domestic violence, we were doing cases on human rights cases. I was the first attorney in this country to represent someone suspected of terrorism, some young Kenyan or Pakistani extraction. We were doing all sorts of those things. Those things caught the eye of two important partners. One, it caught the eye of an organization called Westminster Foundation for Democracy. And one day I get a call and I'm like, would you be interested in a grant to do the work you're doing? Voila. And I got some very significant grant that gave the institution wings to fly. Okay? Then, a, a couple of months later, I got another call from the US Embassy. And the US Embassy were telling me, um, would you be interested in uh, a scholarship? We have looked at what you're doing on human rights and governance, and we are very interested. And so they invited me, and they gave me what they call the Fulbright Scholarship to go to my master's in Washington, D.C. An opportunity which I also gladly took. But before that happened, and before I took off, something even more significant happened. And I'm telling you this story for a reason. I decided that I wanted to be active in the public space. I had been a student leader of the university, but I did not want to get into politics. I just wanted to make myself useful in the public space. So I asked the Daily Nation to give me a column. They put me to the test and allowed me to start writing. So I used to write a Sunday column. Every Sunday, I did a Sunday column for the nation. One day, early in the morning, around 7 in the morning, very early in the morning, my secretary tells me there is someone to see you here. My practice is that I walk to the reception to receive my guest. So I walk to the reception and I meet a gentleman, a tall, dark and handsome gentleman. 
He's carrying a copy. It was a mandal copy. He's carrying a copy of uh, the mission of the previous day, the Sunday mission. And he tells me, I am looking for the gentleman who wrote this article, my article. So I tell him, come into my office. He came into my office. We sat down. We ended up talking for three hours with this gentleman. And do you know what our conversation was about? This gentleman asked me, I have read your article. I have seen your ideas. Have you ever thought of joining active politics? Have you ever thought of joining elective politics? And I told him, no. The one thing that has never crossed my mind is running for political office. I don't think it is my thing. And he told me, you know, in this article, you're talking about two important things. You're talking about the need for Kenya to have a fresh start through a new constitution. You're also talking about Kenya to rethink its economic architecture. The best place to see these two ideas come true is on the floor of parliament. That is where you have a chance to push your idea where it really counts. The rest, as they say, is history. I got an interest. That seed was planted. And that young, dark, and handsome gentleman who triggered this whole journey is today the President of the Republic of Kenya. So anytime I run into a political headwinds, I tell you, if you had not walked into my office and convinced me to get into this trouble, today I would just be enjoying my quiet legal practice. <laughs> but why do I tell you these stories? I tell you this story because number one, Usipo Jituma Hautapata. Unaitaji Ujituma. Na vijana lazima tuwe wako Ujituma. We have a tendency to, of course it is easy to sit back and say, but there are no opportunities. It's easy to sit back and whine. It's easy to sit back and complain and even point fingers. The government is not doing this. No one is giving the opportunity. But let me tell you, good people, it's easier okiji tuma. It's easier okiji tuma. And this thing you call luck, people call it luck. L-U-C-K. Luck is actually the convergence of effort and opportunity. That is what luck is. Effort converging with opportunity. If you make effort, there is very high likelihood that that effort will meet opportunity. If you don't make the effort, it is very likely that opportunity will fly right in front of you and you will not notice. And the effort in the Ujitu, Ujitu. So I want to ask young people today that as we start off this journey of this program, Kwanza to Amoya Pamba, we shift our minds from being people who seek employment, and I'm not telling you not to seek employment. By all means, if there's a good opportunity for employment and you see it and you want to pursue it and you believe it's good for your career path, go for it. But even as you go for it, be co-creators of opportunities, be co-creators of employment. And as you do that, in this shifting of the mind, shifting of the paradigm, please don't be held back by age old cliches and you'll be told that you're too young. You're too young. But you have no experience. How are you going to do this and you have no experience? In the same year that someone was asking me to run for office, I had gone for an interview. I was obsessed with being part of the constitution making journey of this country. So I saw an advertisement. That advert had been put out by the gentleman who had been named as chairman 
of the Constitution Review Process. He's called Professor Yash Palgai. Yash Palgai has put out an, an advert. He wants to hire a research assistant who will help him on the journey to the new constitution. I thought this job was meant for me. I saw it and said, this job is meant for me. I have done, studied constitutional law. I have just done a dissertation titled The Delicate Balance in Constitution Making. So I have done all the research you can do about constitution making. So I applied. And I've been writing for an interview. So I appeared before Yashpan guy. He was doing the interviews himself. And he tells me, young man, you think you can do this job? And I'm like, prof, by all means, this job was actually created for me. And he said, I would love, I love your passion, I love your confidence, but I'm looking at your resume, I'm looking at your CV, I couldn't experience. Okay? You're just stepping out of your school. Okay? And how old are you again, young man? So I tell him my age. And he said, Okay. Um, sometime in the future, we will work together. Okay? <laughs> After you have added on a few, a few years, and you have added on a little bit more experience. So I didn't get the job. I didn't get the job. And for your information, it's the only job I ever attempted to get in my life. To date, I have never applied for any other job. And the same year that someone was telling me I'm too young, a few months down the line, someone else was telling me, get into leadership. Think about this. So, there are those who will discourage you, but don't accept to be discouraged. I love to say, in any fight, what matters is never the size of the dog in the fight, but the size of the fight in the dog in that fight. It's not about your size, it's not about your age. If you are good enough, you are old enough. That is what counts. If you are good enough, you are old enough. So are we ready to shift our mindset so that as we launch this platinum time in the journey to invest, we launch it Say we don't want to complain, we don't want to whine, we want to be part of the solution and not part of the problem. And for you to do that, I want you to quickly do five things. Number one, I want you to be lovers of skill. I want you to be lovers of skill. I want you to be lovers of ideas. I want you to be lovers of innovation. There are people who think anybody can do anything. I don't agree. You need to prepare yourself for a particular task. So be people who are receptive to skilling. You want to gain new ideas. You want to be part of innovation. And that is why one of the things I'm proposing here is that this initiative should be combined with what we are doing with the Kenya National Innovation Agency. We have just launched something called the Presidential Innovation Challenge. It's a challenge for young people to innovate. Innovate across all fields. You can innovate in fisheries, you can innovate in fintech, you can innovate in agriculture. I'm particularly challenging young people to innovate on agriculture. We want to make agriculture look cool so that young people can be part of agriculture. Today, agriculture is not attracting young people because it doesn't look cool. The image of agriculture is still an old, tired woman with a gender on her shoulder and a child on her back. It doesn't look cool at all. We want young people to make agriculture cool. Plug into the, we are going to leave here the, the digital address, the website of the Kenyan National Innovation Agency. We launched this presidential challenge in Eldoret. Plug in and bring your ideas. We can make this initiative anchored on the innovation. Number two, please network. Network, you are not going to be effective if you are stuck in your little space. Break barriers, break silos, and network. Go out and talk to people. And that is why in this Kenya National Innovation Agency, we 
We have asked them to send an officer here before you finish today. Someone, someone from the Kenya National Innovation Agency will come to talk to you on how you can network in access. In the, in the Jamhuri Day week, from 11 to 15 of December, we are hosting the Youth Connect Africa Summit, bringing to Nairobi 20,000 African youth from Lamu to Timbuktu, from Johannesburg to Cairo. 20,000 African youth. And they're coming here to talk about a theme we have called African Youth Innovating Across Borderless Africa. We want to unleash the people of African people. I would love to see all of you as part of that innovation week. We clear the program officially launched. So I request uh, uh, all our partners, Radical, the big for Radical, you can join us here. And also uh, Miss May, you can also join us kindly. We request also Caleb, a representative of young people, will have a big June. We are very good. Mr. Rudy Sarvon, you can also have a big time. Kwahi, Kwahi, Sani, Kaini. Sorry. So after the signing, was it will be clear the program officially launched? I'll have to talk one word, I'll have to share it here. Chris of India, who is the ruler of the Sahara Sahara.